All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the weekend live stream. Um, so today's topic of choice for those who are oh, so um, today's topic of choice. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, every weekend I try to do about a one hour live stream, uh, sometimes a little longer, sometimes uh, eh, a little shorter, but usually it's about an hour. And um, I try to answer one question or have a topic at the beginning of the video from a comment uh, from a subscriber. And then I go and uh, bring up the chat about five, 10 minutes later and answer all the questions in there. So um, today what we're going to be talking about is a Someone in a recent video commented uh, on my freelance video. Yesterday, I did a video talking about freelancing. And they said, what about working remote? And I have a little bit of a take on working remote. And the reason I, it came up in the video because a couple things. Sometimes people don't necessarily want to work for themselves. They just think that's the only way to work for your, uh, the only way to work from home, right? Is to be a freelancer and have your own schedule. Um, well, that's not necessarily true, although there is additional freedom that comes with essentially working for yourself. The the freedom uh, that a lot of people are looking for is to work remote. So what does that entail and what does that, what does that mean? What are my thoughts on it? Well, remote is a – and by working from remote, obviously, I'm talking about working from home, right? We in, in web dev and software, we can work anywhere in the world anywhere. Um, a lot of the developers that I work with who are contract employees or exit, uh, or uh, they, they work in different countries. They're traveling all the time. They're, you know, working from uh, um, co-working spaces, really just interesting stuff a lot of times. So um, it's a very common thing, but why, why am I against it for some people and why wouldn't I want to do it? Well, a couple things uh, that we have, I, we have seen, and stats will base this up, and I encourage you to obviously go and do your own research, not just take my word for it. I don't have any of the stats on hand. But uh, working remote, you'll typically get paid a little bit less. Some people will say, you know what, I'm okay with that. <laughs> if I don't have to go into work and I have to dress up, I don't have to do the the person-to-person -person thing, I'm okay getting paid a little bit less. Also, you'll have less opportunity for promotion statistically speaking why are they you know usually remote developers there's there's no moving up from there you know what i mean like you once you're a senior remote dev you're going to stay a senior remote dev it, it's going to be much harder to to increase that salary as well as to increase that position which is equally as important and uh three especially when you're starting your career off as a remote developer um you're going to be learning less. Uh, that's kind of my my thoughts on it. I personally would not, for those first two reasons and for the third reason, would not want to be remote positions. And when I've talked with recruiters in the past, um, they've always been very confused by this. But as someone who believes that a lot of the uh, moving up is being there in person and is making sure that you you have that you have that FaceTime, I think it's very important and. That's something that you can't get as a remote developer, as well as learn um, collaborating. You can, of course, pair program. You can, of course, um, you know, share code and stuff like that. But it's not quite the same as being in the same building, um, being there in the standups and the sprints in, in person, um, and going from there. And that's kind of my my thought about it. Is I I really for all of you, and it's always the dream, right? A lot of people who want to do freelance have never done freelance before. <laughs> a lot of people have worked remote or want to work remote have never done it. And there's something wrong with working remote. And oftentimes as a, like on Monday, I'll be working from home because I have to run some errands during the day. Um, and a lot of companies will work with you. You want to work one, two days uh, from home? Uh, no problem at all. Most companies are okay with that. You got obviously can't assume that, but... It, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're just starting your career, I think I think the what you have to do is I think what you have to do is have that FaceTime. And I think you'll learn more in the first like five years of your career being there in person than you than you would um, being a remote developer. And honestly, most remote positions are one of those things where 
they're really looking for senior developers, developers who have already proved themselves that if you're getting a remote job as your first job, maybe as your you know one year experience, you're probably not going to pay that well, and you're probably not going to advance your knowledge and skill set as much as you would other positions. But that that's that's just my two cents on working remote. It is a great thing, though. I mean, I tell you right now, just the idea that hey, I don't have to drive to work, I can stay at home uh, or wherever in the world, right, and and go from there. Something that's exciting and to consider, but um. That's my thoughts on the remote dev and how to get a remote job is really what the question was about. Really get a couple of years of experience. If you're at a current job and you want to leave for a remote role, just ask them to change you to remote. Sometimes after you've proven yourself and you've, you've shown your skill after being there in person, they're much more willing to let you be a remote developer because you're able to go and, and say, Hey, Look, I, you know my work ethic, you know what I'm doing, you know what I'm capable of. I like being here, but I need to be remote. And sometimes they will work with you, but uh, something to consider. All right, so let's uh, let's get some questions here. Hello to everybody, by the way. Uh, a lot of you guys said hello, I, uh, so hello. What's the smoke? It's just the essential oil diffuser. That's, that's all it is. Uh, shout out to our boys in Romania. Uh, um. My goal is to work remotely in the Philippines. If I can make 50K and live there, it'd be a dream. I do intend to work on site initially, though. Yeah, I mean, you should be able to get 50K uh, remote after a couple of years of experience. No problem at all. You probably make a lot more than that, to be honest. Um, so I wouldn't be too worried about it. How to start and handle a project from start to finish. Uh, every project's different, but... Really, if it's a, like a personal project, I would say try and think out bits and pieces of the project. And this goes for any, any any development project. Try to think out what the components are. You know, you have your header, you have your main application. Like think of it in the HTML5 semantic elements, right? Where you have your header, the main, a side, article. Those all elements all came about because they they essentially divs were there that were always being called, you know, ID header. And the reason I bring that up is you need to kind of have the same mentality of how can I break this project down into smaller components, smaller pieces, and then execute it. And then as you are starting that, at, in the start, you're kind of devising, in, maybe in your head and wireframes and user stories, whatever it is, you're devising how to handle that. And as you execute it, what you'll be doing is you'll be building it and then you'll be connecting them piece by piece. Um, so Paul Hanna says, yo, Dylan, your channel has been great to me. Well, thank you. <laughs> Good news. After eight months of coding in total, Udemy courses, four month coding bootcamp, you tutorials. I just got my first job offer and I'm taking it. Congratulations, sir. Uh, feels good. I have no doubt. My channel has grown a lot. We are growing by about 23, 2400 subs right now. Um, pretty exciting. Uh, how's the new computer? Loving it. It works great. Works like a charm. Um, Uh, waiting for the black rope. So I got a great video coming. I'm actually filming it this weekend. I have the script written, the not to video. Yeah. So this is going to be a uh, how to uh, not be a coding God. And I'm going to teach you how to be a Wix God. That's kind of, that's kind of, that's kind of it. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. I, <laughs> I, uh, I've been writing some good one liners. At least I think they're good. Um, Uh, any advice for a 13 year old developer? Don't forget your younger audience. Hey, man, I, I am impressed if you're 13 year old and a developer. What I would say to you, uh, Tank Happy, is that, uh, or any of the younger individuals, is you are in a, you are in a unique position in which you can chase the dream. You can, uh, you can instead of spending your time playing Call of Duty and League of Legends, and um, doing all that, you can instead devote your time and energy to a side project that you can help grow and mature and start making passive income and have a five years by the time you're 18, have a phenomenal portfolio, 
phenomenal skill set and phenomenal certificates under your belt. And I would encourage you, I would encourage you to take the time, this time of life. And this is, this is, by the way, I don't expect any 13 year old to do this, but this is what I would do knowing what I know now, if I could tell my 13 year old self, these, these are very hard things to do of where I basically just told you a 13 year old to spend what would be equivalent to uh, about 40% of your current lifespan that you have lived to say, look, prepare yourself over the next five years. And from there, go and study every day, go and start a side project that you're passionate about. And if that one fails, start another side project and continue to build it up, get a little bit of passive income. That would be my advice to you is to start something and continue to um, grow it. And if for some reason that fails to start something else and continue to grow it. So that's kind of, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Uh, what changes can we expect in the coming future of web development? I'm starting to learn web dev. And if any changes coming around the road, how can we be prepared for that? So you're starting to learn web dev. Really what you need to just focus on is JavaScript, HTML, CSS, sort of the trifecta, right? And as you get good at these basic skills, right? And this is very true for like people who are trying to get into... Um, is it Solidium? Uh, I forget what it is, but the Ethereum contracting language that's used all the time. A lot of times for you to pick that up, you just already have to be a developer relatively quickly. Uh, not that it's super complex. It is complex in its own way, writing blockchain and stuff like that. But um, when you already have skills, programming skills, learning a new language or learning a new framework or learning a new how a build tool works, it's all going to be very similar to a degree and you're just going to have to pick it up. So uh, as you immerse yourself into the job market into the skill set, into the the culture, if you will, of coding and software, you'll slowly see these things creep up, right? You'll slowly see like, oh, well, I, I start, you know, six months ago, view, right? Maybe, let's say views exploding. If you're following, you know, blogs and YouTube channels and the job market, and then you start seeing all this stuff in view, you might say, oh, I need to start learning view, for instance. It's just about staying on top of it, really. And that's that's really the one thing that I think I would advise you guys who are in this stuff is always be continually working on your skill set, right? So and that could be a couple different ways. That's not only like, oh, I need to learn a new language. I need to build a new project. I am currently in school about two, three hours ago, I just got done with my first course. I'm going, or my, excuse me, my second course. I'm doing it. My goal to progress my career this year is to get a bachelor's in software development. I'm doing a course every two weeks currently. And it's a rate that I think I can continue. And that's just one way. Um, I've, in these first two courses, I've gotten some web dev certificates from, um, what do you call it? From, um, Certified Internet Web Specialist, which is part of the course curriculum. <coughs> These are things that I'm doing this year to progress my career, to progress my in college. In, when, in college, you don't really get skills, but we can to, to learn and get skills. Uh, so, um, but anyhow, the the point I'm trying to say is that if you are one of those people that are like, look, I'm just going to learn to code in a year, two years, and then I'm just going to coast it. You probably aren't meant to be a developer. Um, now, there's other technical things that you could do, like quality assurance, project management, business analysts that you could get paid very well for in the same industry, in the same space. But if the idea, if your idea is that, hey, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to become a dev, and then I'm going to stop once I get my dev job. And a lot of people do, by the way. A ton of people do. And and those are the people who, you know, they'll stay out of company five, six years. But the the rock stars, the people who uh, companies want, those are the guys job hopping because they're 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 the guys who are hardworking and are worth more than what they're getting paid a lot of times. And that's really who you should be. And that doesn't mean you have to job hop. Um, it's just a simple one simple, you know, exaggerated example. But the point I'm trying to make is that. If you're in if you're in the industry and you stay on top of what's going on in the industry, you shouldn't be worried about what changes may come because you are part of the 10% that is always learning, part of the 10% that is always grinding to continue to grow. So
So um, Ali 2017 is a very um, common thing of, hey, I open a text editor, it's blank, and I'm freaking out. I don't know what to code. Uh, so that goes back to my previous statement. And, it, and it's a very realistic thing. I think it's one of the um, one of the more common things where people sort of panic at the, oh, my God, this is so big. I don't even know where to get started. And they open up that text editor that's blank for the first time. Because before that, you're probably doing like, websites or you're just doing like maybe an algorithm where you're writing 10 lines of code at most at a time. My advice to you is just to break it down into the smallest pieces. You say, okay, what is it that, what is one, what would one function do? I have a click function that needs to add something to an array. Okay, cool. That's one thing that I know I can know how to do. I'll break it down. All right. What I have to add something to the array. What would I what would I do from there? Well, I need a parameter. I need an argument, right, to add whatever it is I want to add an array. I need an array. Is this going to be a local scoped array? Is this going to be a global scoped array? Start breaking it down piece by piece, and then it becomes a lot more, a lot less overwhelming and a lot more manageable when you're just starting out. <coughs> um, Bangla Bangladore is the Silicon Valley of India. All right. How's WGU doing? It's good, man. It, I mean, it's a quick degree program, which I like, right? So like like I mentioned, I got two certs and two classes done in one month, and I'll I'll be doing my third class um, starting it today probably, maybe tomorrow. I'll, I'll take the night off of that. I have to do YouTube stuff. Um, go from there. So do you think, uh, what do I think of nano degree? I did the React nano degree. I didn't finish it. I didn't do the last project, uh, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was an excellent program. I will say that the feedback is the is why you do something like that, as well as to have a certificate that you feel like you can put on a resume. But the, the main thing that I would say is that you don't need to spend $500. I think you could probably get just as much value going to Udemy and spending $100 on five different courses and just knocking that out and doing it quite well. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it. I, I would I would recommend it. But five hundred dollars to a lot of people is a lot of money. It's a lot of money to me too, especially when you can buy a course for ten dollars, right? Um, <laughs> uh, someone have I found an ideal house you guys eventually like to buy? So uh, the housing thing is kind of up in the air right now. Um, I want to buy a house, but um. I was really hoping April would have a job by now. And that's that's been one of the, the sort of scarier things for me is to make that big financial commitment on one salary, even though we can afford it relatively easily as long as I'm employed. Um, so it's kind of going on the back burner uh, until then. Also, I'm paying for school out of pocket right now. So that's you know another $800 a month. Basically, what I've decided is to pay off all my debt. I bought the computer. I had two months. It was basically a three-month loan. Uh, paid it off. I'm paying off my car, which is only about two grand. So I, April and I have zero debt, and right now we're just kind of trying to decide what to do from there. Um, so it looks like we might just rent a house for in the short term and decide um, what to do. But I... We may go month to month on our lease here, and if she gets a job, then go back and look for housing. Um, how to find time between school and work to learn and really code, not just reading docs? Uh, I mean, it, there's always time. <laughs> it's it's hard though, right? Because so a lot of school programs have you waste your time in class. When in reality, you don't learn anything in class. You're going to be teaching yourself online. You're going to be teaching yourself through YouTube, through Udemy courses, and you're just really wasting your time in class doing meaningless assignments and printing lines for your first uh, four programming classes in college. Um, but it's, it's gonna be hard if you're working. I've worked full time and I, I um, what's on my mouse oh, light? Um, I, and I, uh, and I, I worked, I, so I worked full time for the most part, and I was going to school full time. And I, I didn't have the time because I was doing assignments and all this other crap. Um, so you may you may not just have the time, to be honest with you, uh, doing both that. 
Uh, have I ever adventured in the world C and C++? I, in C++, I did a college class. Um, in my current role, I'll be picking up C Sharp to do some back end. So uh, Visual Studio Code is the text editor of choice. Do you still use var and win? No, you should never use var in your coding anymore. Um, that's the that's the gist of it. Just constant list. Do you recommend pursuing data science career or web career for older people who are just starting? I recommend you pursuing the career that you want. This is not a career that you necessarily want to pursue pursue for money. It's not a career that you necessarily want to pursue for job security. All those, both the both, both, oh, both, both those come along with it. This is something that that you want to um, pursue because you like the environment, you like the the career itself to be successful in it. Um, so, if you are more attuned to data science or you're more attuned to web development, I encourage you to take both either one now i will say uh i will say that the data science career and web career have different barriers of entry you might have a harder time getting a data science job without a at least a bachelor's than you would a web dev career um statistically speaking it's a new javascript course coming soon since new computer arrived so uh, i am going to be trying to knock out a good portion of the course um this weekend uh, I'm basically, my game plan is to take school off tonight, take school off tomorrow, and then hit it back on Monday. Um, so that's going to give me enough time to film the YouTube videos, the uh, how to not be a coding god videos. And then um, it's also going to be enough time to, um, to, um, to some time to work on the course. So you look thinner, I'm losing weight? No. If there's one thing I'm not doing, it's not losing weight. <laughs> I had, I'll tell you guys a story. Um, so we have some clothes at my work that, uh, so we have some clothes at my work and um, they needed to make some shirts for the CEO for, for something. And they asked if I, I wore, a, this was like on Tuesday. They asked if I wore a large and then I went into the, the designer room where they have all the clothes, all the merch and all that sort of stuff. Right. And I said, I was like, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. What's, what's up? And like, hey, can you try on these shirts? And I've not like, this is not in like single man summer presentation. All right. And I was just like, they're like, you can go and change shirts to the bathroom. But I was just like, uh, I'll just take it off right here. Right. And so, so that was, um, but I, I, it, anyhow, so, it was one of those things where like, I was just like, I gotta, I gotta start working on the abs again. Cause I was like, I'm feeling a little self-conscious about this right now. Like, I don't feel weird about it, but I would just wish I was in better shape. Had I known I was going to be trying on shirts for people. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that was like my Tuesday. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, How's the block uh, blockchain training coming along? I haven't I haven't started studying blockchain yet. Uh, I have to do my degree, then I have to uh, build some courses, do all this sort of stuff. Blockchain will come around when I graduate, which I'm thinking if I so if I continue at the pace of a course every two weeks, I should graduate around September, maybe uh, earlier August. Should I also start using templates? I, if you're talking about like template strings, template literals, yeah. Uh, I don't really use fetch for anything and classes from here on. I use classes all the time, but I use TypeScript classes. Um, you should you should leave ES5 behind. You definitely want to be coding in the latest and greatest. That's that's kind of it. Set up some compiling tools to take care of that sort of stuff. Um, but uh, so like when you use TypeScript, you're oftentimes using classes that they've defined. You're using observables, all this sort of stuff, and it compiles it down. Uh, for your Angular projects. Um, so I would say, yes, you want to always be using the latest technologies. It's much better than not. How can I find clients besides friends and families? Well, there's sites devoted to that. There's people who are looking for 
people to build things and Craigslist. You can go to web design shops and start working for them and go from there. I mean, honestly, there's a lot of web dev shops that will be there to to um, that have jobs. And sometimes they have to, they're like, oh, well, we don't have the bandwidth to do this or we don't have the, the um, we don't, we don't that you know it's not enough money for you know our for what we charge and so the you can ship it out to them so that's one way of getting clients i've had that at places i've interned at before my favorite content on creator and youtube well isn't that nice uh what's your opinion on mongo dv versus sql i i mean i'm personally a fan of json databases because it's JavaScript object notation, right? Uh, so it's very familiar, um, which is MongoDB, obviously. And it's SQL. I don't, I don't know. I, I I prefer anything that looks more like JavaScript. And so I'm biased, but in terms of actual jobs, there's probably 10, 20-fold more jobs in SQL when it comes to databases than MongoDB. How do I choose what technology is used for a new web app? Well, if I'm building a new web app, it depends why I'm building it. Um, typically, I would build it in Angular because that's what I work in, and I want to build that skill set. Now, say I wanted to build up a React portfolio, I would build a React portfolio. I want to work in cybersecurity. Should I do software engineering? Sounds like a pretty good idea to me. What else would you do? Uh, there's probably a software engineering, computer science, and then there's everything else. <laughs> uh, so I, I think it's probably pretty good. Best PHP frameworks, uh, uh, you, you say with a S, there's really only one good PHP framework, and that's Laravel. If you're looking to do PHP, you should look at Laravel. How's my weekend going? It's going pretty good, man. I uh, I had canceled our two gym memberships, so that's going to save me about $50 a month. I also then uh, went and got a 94% 94% on my final, pass that course. No big deal, just 94%. Uh, I then uh, <laughs> I then went to Ikea. Uh, so it's been, it's been a pretty good day so far. Um, everything considered. And uh, now I'm doing the live stream. This is probably one of the highlights of the day. And then um, I'll be... Uh, <laughs> I'll be um, doing some videos today. I'll be doing some courses, coursework today. This weekend is all devoted to work and because um, I enjoy it. And uh, it's time for me to do it. It's the time. Um, and uh, it's going to be fun. So life, life is good. Uh, I am currently in school. Yes. <coughs> um, is Ruby dead or dying? Uh, <laughs> I would say yes. A Ruby developer may not say yes. Um, it really just depends on who you ask. Um, I would say that in terms of Ruby in the front end, it's always JavaScript. In terms of Ruby on Rails, I think there's... It's dying maybe the wrong word. Is it stagnant? I think there's an overwhelming yes. Uh, and that's the problem for newer developers. Stagnant is just as bad as dying. Um, and I think you could see that based off the like go go like right now. If you just want to know if something's dying, go right now onto ZipRecruiter. Go on to LinkedIn and whatever those technology jobs are. Ruby's probably a full stack developer. Look at full stack developer jobs. Look at a hundred of the first full stack developer jobs that got released in your country for the last 24 hours. And what you'll see is that zero to five of them have Ruby on Rails. And so um, it's really one of those things where you can hope that it's not, not dead, not dying, uh, but...
All right, guys, I am back. I don't know what happened. I got uh, I got booted out of my own thing. That was rude. Uh, so I think we're good to go. Are we good to go here? Is the is the video back? All right, cool. We're back. My bad, guys. I'm not quite sure. Uh, we as Trick Two Jeeves would say, we back once a motherfucker again. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah. So the the Ruby Devs truck, <laughs> the Ruby Devs are salty. No. Um. Uh huh. Can I use school projects as part of my portfolio? You can use anything that's an impressive portfolio uh, project. So you can just say it's a learning project if they ask. If they ask you directly, is this a school project? You say yes. There's no problem with that. Um, but yeah, so I, I mean, that's that's really the one hard way, in my opinion, to find out if something is stagnant or, and there's, there's job skills like charts that you can look up on in Indeed and compare, right? So like if you were to go to Indeed right now, and you know what, let's even do that, right? Let's do that real quick just to make a point. So if we were to go to Indeed, oops, Indeed, I'm spilling shit over here. Indeed skill. Uh, search job skills. All right, let's see here. All right, so uh, skill search. Uh, uh, you are able to indeed skills chart. There's a way of doing this. It's been a minute since I've done this. Uh, uh, Give me a second to fill, figure it out. But there's a way to indeed compare skills. Compare jobs. All right, let's see here. Maybe this is it. Uh... Skill search. Ugh, I've done this a million times. I don't remember what they'd have to be. Uh, compare. What is it? Uh, I've done this. Skill search. No, this isn't what I'm looking for. Skill, indeed, skill change. Is it track? All right, I have to. I have to look at it another time. Sorry, guys. But there's there's a way of. There's a way of check of actually searching on Indeed to where you can see the search results by the amount of jobs and and um, gone from that. Uh, my apologies for not being able to pull it up on that instant, um, but uh, I've I've shown I've talked about it in the past. What if someone can't get a job after an internship? Should so should that person go for another internship? I think you should. Uh, I mean, what else are you going to do? Are you just not going to work? <laughs> so, like, um, I mean, if you can't get a job, take another internship. Take that as resume experience. Build it up. Build up your skill set while you're getting that relevant experience, and maybe you get a job there. Should I learn PHP or Python or JavaScript first? It really depends on... Uh, what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Have I ever felt imposter syndrome? Yes, uh, I have. Um, my, I mean, this is something that's pretty common with a lot of developers. And it's one of those things where oftentimes we don't 
know where we stand with other developers, especially when you're just getting started. Um, if you want to feel good about yourself as a developer, it's really easy to just go to meetups. And it's one of the things <laughs> that I have ha found that helped me get over my imposter syndrome is you go to a meetup and you can tell that it's, you're better than about nine. And it, I don't mean this in a negative way, by the way, because I think meetups are great. And most, but most of the people at meetups are people looking to get better and are beginners. And typically, if you're in the top 10% of that, you should feel fine. You should not have imposter syndrome. Uh, and that's one of the things that helped me overcome it. Also, just the in recent times where I had multiple offers, multiple job offers before I took my current job, that really gave me some confidence that, okay, uh, maybe I can, I can relax a little, I guess. Uh, what do meetups meetups typically do? It depends on the location and the meetup, but a lot of times someone gives a presentation about a technology, about a, a library, a language, or a topic, and then there's usually free pizza and swag. So at the, <laughs> at the end of the day, you get a free meal, sometimes some free stuff, and it's great to network. The last meetup I went to was about Node.js and blockchain and, and React, React, abstracting React components, I want to say. And what, that, what was interesting about that was that there was three different companies vying to get developers. They, all of the three people that were talking there st stood up, said, hey, I just want to say that we're hiring for this role. If you want to come get your resume, give me your resume. I'm the hiring manager, uh, this and that. And um, and I think it's a, a um, great way f for you to be introduced to people who are actually going to get your resume. Um, so something to consider. Uh, no one's saying go to a meetup to show off, but it puts it in perspective because as a as a working developer, you go and you meet people who are not working developers and you say, okay, well, and then you see these, you know, people are giving talks that are much better than usually. But sometimes you see the people giving talks and you're like, I could give that talk. Hmm. And then you start thinking, maybe I'm not as shit as I think I am. Uh, so um, I, I think it's one of those things where you just have to, have to be honest with yourself. And, you know, you've coded so many projects by at a certain point that it's one of those things where are you going to be the best developer in the world like numero uno no but are you a good developer and you should be able to confidently say yes uh what's your honest opinion on learning digital marketing before i learn html css and javascript i know a little front end with digital marketing uh, I mean, digital marketing is a great expanding field. It's also a great position to be remote. It's probably what I would be doing if I wasn't in software. Do you have to learn digital marketing to do front-end development? No. Um, but it is a great skill to add on to things. Did Free Code can't release their new stuff? They did. Look at that. Your boy might be doing some of this this weekend. Um, oh, no, they didn't. Never mind. Sad. They released some of it. Did they? No, they didn't. Oh, my goodness. I got excited for a second. My bad. Um, uh, so um, part of the beta curriculum. Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, I got. I thought the homepage was different. Anyhow, um, Otho Leisure donates two dollars. Thank you, man. That's appreciated. Um, I know these projects seem really over. Is that really the bar for being ready in those technologies to get a job? It's the bar for you to learn those technologies and then go and build other things. Is my my opinion of the bar. But also, it depends on what you're what you're trying to do. Right. Every every job is different, and oftentimes. All you need to showcase what it is that you're trying to all, – all you need to showcase to an employer is that, one, that you're eager, two, that you're passionate, and three, that you're always learning. And if you show those things and good communication for four, uh, and like those first three things are all kind of one. So really two things, um, that you're learning uh, and you like it, and 
good communication. And you have those two things. A lot of times for these junior level roles, for these internships, if you can show some projects, if you can show that you've been coding for six months every day in one way or another, those are the type of people they want to hire. Those are the type of people I would want to hire. Um, so are those projects basic? Yes. Will you be building things that are more complex than that? Usually, not always. I build a lot of very basic stuff sometimes. I build a lot of basic CRUD tools. Um, but I have the skills to build those CRUD tools because I did took the time to build these basic projects at one time to be familiar with building my own things and 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 being able to start. You have to start somewhere, right? And you can kind of think of these basic projects as the foundation. <coughs> Uh, were there ever a company you applied for you felt hesitant to pursue once you went in for the interview? Yeah. When I really needed a job, I applied to AMC and I got the job. And then I never showed up because I didn't want to work at the movie theater. <laughs> so the AMC in Torrance, uh, you heard, I apologize. Um, this is my official apology because there's a dick move on me for accepting a job and never showing up. Because I didn't want to work for you. I'm sorry. Uh, I needed the money. I decided to uh, deliver pizzas, but uh, it was rude. I should have called and said, no, thank you. I declined. Uh, but <laughs> um, yeah, it's exactly that mentality, right? You have to crawl before you walk. So um, what's the salary range? Is it based on language? What do you... What do you suggest pays the most? Your salary range will be highly determined by you. So that's my answer to that. And I don't think it matters based off. There are languages that pay slightly more than others. Um, but I would say that in terms of salary, what you're looking for is your salary range will be highly determined by you. Does... Writing a prime number really relate to front end? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Speaking of making basic stuff for GitHub, do jobs care if it's original? Yes, they do. 100%. You got to be unique. You got to be unique. There's nothing that is more of a turnoff than seeing the same weather app, the same calculator, the same to-do app that every other applicant had done. People want to see custom code. They don't want to see something that they know that you could have Googled or watched a YouTube video on to build that sort of stuff. And that's the reality of it. So, of course, they want it to be unique. <laughs> Hi, I'm a junior IT student. Although I'm, I am completing my BS, many people say it's hard to find a job with just a BS degree. I was thinking about getting a certification. Do you have any suggestions? I suggest you build a portfolio. You can, of course, get a job with a degree uh, or without a degree, but you have to treat it like a job while you're job searching. In terms of certifications in software, there aren't any that are, unless you're looking for like Java certifications. Um, there, It's really hard um, to, to go with that. I would say focus on internships, focus on projects. Uh, do I still deal with HTML, CSS, even though I work with JavaScript? Yeah. Uh, what are the ways? So, Dylan, you said if you're able to prove that you've been working for some six months, it would increase the chance of getting a dev job, let's say. Um, so what are some ways to prove it? Well, your GitHub's a great way of proving it. That actually tracks your commits. It quite literally has a chart that shows every day that you code it. That's a great way. Having projects to show is another great way. I have a YouTube channel. shows my passion. Having a blog is another way. Writing a book, building a course. There's a million different ways. Going to meetups, giving talks at meetups, volunteering through code.org, all these sorts of things. Having a very great LinkedIn to showcase all the things we just talked about.
expanding a basic project is great as well. Um, if you take a basic project, like, oh, hey, I want to display a table, and then you table of some API data, and then you build custom charts, you build authentication, always taking it to the next level. There's a great, great way of going about it. Are there digital marketers at the company I work for? Um, so I, I don't necessarily want to talk about the company that I work for. I will say that we have about three or 400 employees, I believe, uh, at corporate. And so we probably have a ton of people that do a ton of things. Uh, did I finish my voting app? I did. Um, like a month ago before I started school, but I haven't touched it since. What made you choose web development over something like programming video games? Uh, a couple things. Uh, one, I didn't want to do programming video games because uh, I, I wasn't something I was passionate about. I enjoy playing video games, but I've also programmed video games before. I don't like it. Um, two, the industry as a whole is very cancerous from everybody that I've talked to that works in that industry. There is they are stressed out of their mind all the time trying to meet deadlines and quite underpaid in comparison a lot of times. And three, when it comes to um, front-end development or full-stack development, I think there's probably more jobs. It's really hard to kind of get your foot in the door to, to anything, but it's a little bit harder in the, the programming of uh, gaming. Does in front end does the front end developer need data visualization skills um, such as free code? So data visualization is kind of a very strange certificate. Basically, what that cert is on uh, on free code camp is hey, let's just add something to with React and add something with D three. Do you need D three for a role? No. Do you need React for a role? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> so React or Angular? <coughs> huh. Is data structure mandatory for web development? Yeah, you should you should understand how data structures work and how to build a a good data structure for your needs. Do you have any degree or certs? I have zero degrees. I uh, I'm working on that though. I have uh, I am currently enrolled in a software engineering uh, course. I passed my second class. Yay me! Um, in terms of certs, I don't have any certs of merit. I'll, I have the free code camp front end certificate certificate if you count that i have the um certified internet web specialist and um advanced web specialist i forget what the new course is that i just did but i went today and i took that course basically the way that you pass the final for this one web dev course is that you go and you get the cert through um certified internet web specialist so i have that as well um yeah, and, and Ramsey brings a, a very good point that, so there's sites like Glassdoor, and if you want to see what the industry is like, go ahead and go ahead and check out, you know, what the people at Glassdoor are saying about these gaming companies. And it's insane. It is absolutely insane. And I, by the way, I've, I've talked, I've interviewed people who work at these these companies, they're always talking about crunch time and this and working late hours and being underpaid. And there's been so much shadiness going on and it's, it's just rough. So it's not necessarily an industry I ever wanted to. Uh, Raul Sanchez says, Dylan, thanks for all the inspiration. I reached out to a company I looked up to and the CEO met with me and wants to mentor me and add me as an intern. Nice, man. Congratulations on that. Um, and uh, good luck with everything, man. That's really good. And that's, I mean, sometimes you, that the reason that you got that internship was because you reached out, you showed your intellectual curiosity, your hard work, probably you know, when you reached out, and that you're eager and act, and you you want. You want to succeed. There's a lot of people in this chat. There's a lot of people in general who are who can't figure out why they 
aren't getting jobs, why they aren't getting internships. And the, the truth of the matter is because you're not working hard enough. Uh, it's because you are spending 30 minutes a day coding instead of three hours a day coding. It's because you're not going and building out your projects. You're not taking your GitHub seriously. You're not taking your LinkedIn seriously. You're not taking your portfolio seriously. You're not taking any of it seriously. You're learning and you're not taking your project seriously. You're not taking your job search seriously and you're not putting in the time that it takes to get your foot in the door. And if you do, you will succeed. It's that simple. It is hard to hire hire people who fit that category. It that is true. For for me to sit down and tell you that nine out of ten of you probably aren't coding three to four hours a day, and in that you aren't doing your own projects, you probably don't have a portfolio site. Your LinkedIn is just created. You haven't actually gone through and done anything with it. Your GitHub is bare and barren. All right, and in terms of learning, you may even be learning the wrong stuff. You don't have a Udemy course you're going through. Most of people are doing not what they need. And those are all the things that, in my opinion, you have to do. And then there's a bunch of other things that are supplemental that would be great. But um, when they're going to interview people, not only do you have to have skills, you have to show all of it. You have to, to be, if you have the whole package, and those are just some, you can do it. But you have to put the work in. A lot of times people just aren't. And it's hard. Don't get me wrong, man. It's hard. No one's saying it's easy. Um, but you can do it. It's just hard. Um, so put the work in every day. And I say this, I feel like every live stream. Because a lot of you, what you want is a better life. What you want is an interesting career. What you want is a good, good, solid job that you can make good money and have good job security. And to do that, to go from beginner to I have a job, I'm gonna say it, like I say every live stream, feels like anyhow, code every fucking day until you have a job, okay? That's what you need to do. You don't need to do anything else. You got shit, <laughs> shit. You gotta eat, eat, you gotta sleep, sleep. Everything else is optional. You come home tired from work, not a good excuse. Don't care if you work a double shift. You're putting in your time, okay? You have to have that mentality because this is something that you have to build momentum with in your learning process. So code every day until you have a job. You will get one. Code every day, several hours a day. Um, but I'll say this again next live stream. Um, and people may think I'm joking. Oh, Dylan doesn't really mean code every day for three, four hours. No, no. I truly do mean spend three or four hours every day. I don't care if it's Christmas. I don't care if it's your daughter's birthday. I don't care if it's your son's birthday. Um, you can celebrate it. Do you know how many, do you know how many Christmases and birthdays and Valentine's Day? that I couldn't afford to pay for or that I didn't celebrate with April because I was grinding it out. You got to grind it out, man. It's that simple. And that means that you have to take a back seat to the other things in life. And some people don't like that. Some people don't, no, 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 no I'm not doing that. No, no. All right, fine. That's fine. But that's why if you're in that 10% that's going to do it, do it. Um, Every day. Until you have a job. Well, so when I say code every day, that could include meetups. That can be actually writing code, watching videos. But also you need to apply to, if you actually feel like you're job ready, you need to apply to about 50 jobs a day. That's my advice. 50 jobs a day. Um, I just got a big web dev project doing two months. I committed to it. Should I try my best to admit that it's impossible? Uh, well, are you working with a company at a company or is this like a freelance project? So that's two different things.
Is there a point to using at input, output, event emitter, and Angular when you could use a services state manager, NGRX, instead? Uh, well, so the at input, at output, yeah, you can technically send everything with services. Um, and I, I, I'm not super familiar with the the um, the third party ng rx right, other than I import observables from it. But the out the input and output and emit of any emitter, it serves a very specific purpose of we are sending data to a component and from a component, and then we are emitting when that happens. And services have a multifunctional aspect to it. Most of the time, you'll be using it to hit Ajax Ajax calls and stuff like that. Um, I personally, and services, so services as a whole are designed to be used by multiple components. That's why it's a service. So oftentimes you're just passing data from one component to another. And if that's the case, you probably want to use input, output, and event emitter. But you could, in theory, do a similar, if not the identical thing. Yes, 50. Uh, uh, should you apply to jobs that require a degree even if you don't have a degree, if you think you're qualified? Yes. Both my jobs that I've had in software development have said degree required or, de or a degree preferred. You know what I got? I have a high school diploma. You know what I have that's better than a degree? hard work that I can prove. <laughs> Not just like, oh, I'm, uh, I'm hashtag, hashtag code guy, hashtag, uh, hashtag grind at, you know, 11 a.m. in the morning at the, at the Starbucks, right? No. I have projects. I have skills. I have passion to sh uh, show. And that makes you very attractive, attract, very attractive to companies that say, hey, here's a guy who codes, who's enjoys it and and goes from there so i i guess am i still getting i'm getting my degree because there is value to it there there 100 is value to it because even though it's the hiring manager who may like me it could be the hr person who doesn't want me to be management doesn't want me to to get promoted right so it there's value there's always value is there skill value usually not um so is it better to code four hours a day or code 10 hours a day for a few days and take a few days off it is always so i say code every day three to four hours because you need that continual update and that's the same way with schooling so every day i wake up minus saturdays and sundays uh if i have a test like i pass my test i'm taking a day and a half off Every morning I get up, guys, and I spend an hour and a half. I show up to work about an hour, an hour and a half early, and I study for my my courses. I get off work. I study an hour, hour and a half for my courses, and then I continue every single day because it builds on itself. You need to focus on this stuff until you get that role and go from there. Oh, man. Um, but, yeah, you should definitely do th uh, three to four hours every single day um, but is much better than just putting in 10 hours and burning yourself out. Uh, is it possible a full stack project in two months? Yeah, I mean, every project is unique, um, but I would say that if you don't feel like you can, you should probably reach out to the company and say, look, I don't, I actually think I took off more than I can chew. <coughs> How do you celebrate after fixing a bug area that you've been trying to fix for a while? Um, I usually, if it's at home, I usually scream at the top of my lungs, I am a fucking coding god. And then in the background, I hear April say, yeah, baby, you are, or something like that. Uh, that's usually, would you ever get a master's in CS? Yes. Um, April and I's current agreement is this. I will, well, yes and no. It is a possibility. It's not 100% that it's going to happen. Um, so 
my current agreement with April is I'm getting my bachelor's, at which point she can go back and get her master's, at which point I we will discuss me getting a master's at that point. And that will be based off a few things. It'll based off, be off how much passive income I have, because part of the reason I'm going back to school is more money. Do I even need more money? Is it worth the time and effort and energy, or is my time better spent building courses, writing books, working on the YouTube channel? Because I am putting in a time investment to school right now. Um, not only if if I graduate within a year, is it going to cost me seven thousand dollars? I am putting three hours a day that would be going towards writing a book. It would be going towards finishing my courses. It would be going towards YouTube. There is a time investment that goes along with it, so that will need to be a uh, um, a discussion that has to happen. Is it bet because it, 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 there's a very realistic possibility that three four years from now that if I've everything's going well with the courses, books, the YouTube channel, that my time is better spent there than actually going and getting a master's in, in computer science. What kind of projects do you work on that help you get a job? My YouTube channel, my website, codingtutorials360.com, was built in AngularJS. It was my first tester project. That was really helpful, as well as my hackathon projects. Uh, how old am I? I am 30 years old. 3-0. Um, <laughs> Patan. Start learning Patan. Hey, a lot of languages out there. Never heard of Patan. Um, how does Heroku work? Heroku is um, software as a service. Basically, what that means is they give you a place to launch your backends and use it. That's kind of how I would think of uh, Heroku. Um, So, uh, all right, guys, we've been going about an hour. Um, I usually like to end my live streams on a quick note, a quick something, something. And uh, I, I just want to say this. Um, so about 10 minutes ago, I talked to you about what it takes to be a good developer, what it takes to be in that top 10%. And about 90%, I'd say, don't make that category. And actually... Uh, what you've seen, this could be a variety of reasons, is that around then about 15 people have left since I've said that because sometimes people can't handle the cold hard truth. And the cold hard truth is that it's hard to get a developer job, but there are ways of doing it and you have to put the work in. And if me saying that and saying that you are, you know, most people aren't and that upsets you, there's an issue there because it's you should objectively be able to look at yourself in the mirror and say, am I meeting my my standards of what it is required? And am I being successful with it? If you're not being successful, then you need to raise what your standards are to accomplish your goals. Um, everyone's goals are different. But if your goal is to be a developer, be well compensated in that aspect, you're going to have to work very hard. Um, you know, it's. I don't think I've ever said it is easy, but there is a level of work that all of this takes. And you should be very open and honest with yourself that if you have that work ethic, if you have that grind, and if you are actually going to stick to it, it's very easy to work hard for a month. It's very easy, at least in my opinion. It's very easy to work hard for two months, three months. Um, but that's about the max most people can do. Uh, work every day for three months. I've been working every day for about three years. Um, minus uh, one or two vacations that I've had where I've been working towards my future every single day uh, for about three years. And my goal has been to do it for five years, essentially. And I probably will continue past that because I actually have really sort of enjoyed life more that I've been more and more productive. But anyhow, the point I'm trying to say is that you have to have that mentality is that I'm going to work every day that I'm one step closer to my goal. And if it happens that after 90 days, I'm not at my goal, do I stop taking a step closer or do I stall stagnate and not try and accomplish what it is that I want out of whatever my goals and dreams are. And a lot of times people do, right? They, they, they fade back into bad habits. They, they veg out, um, 
into watching, you know, instead of instead of on a Saturday on the weekend watching two hours of TV, ain't nothing wrong with Netflix, right? We all like to Netflix and chill, as the kids say. Um, but you watch 12 hours of Netflix, and then you wasted a day. Um, and not only that, you probably burnt yourself out looking at a screen and don't want to do it the next day. So what I'm trying to say to you is um, it's easy to work hard for short periods of time. It's much harder to be consistent in life and um, work at things on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you do that, you do work on a day-to-day -day basis, you will accomplish what you want. It's never, No one's ever going to say it's going to be easy. No one's going to say it's everyone's going to succeed. But if you do stick at it and you do continue to pace yourself on a day-to-day -day basis, day-to-day, -day, that means today, means tomorrow, means the next day, it means until you get to your destination, you're moving forward, you will get there. It just takes a lot of hard work and a lot of commitment. So uh, that's my final thought for the day, guys. I, I appreciate you. And as we like to say, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, support me on patreon.com slash coentorials360. I appreciate you all. Thank you again to our donator earlier who donated $2. It is, I know a lot of you are students. A lot of you are in transition to new careers and and new horizons and money oftentimes when you are students and you are trying to transition your life it's not something you have a lot of so i do appreciate it when you decide to financially support me and the channel uh, i love doing this youtube stuff and you know what i love i love money as well and so it is always nice when that happens uh but uh, i appreciate you guys so much thank you so much I will see you next time. Don't forget to watch Monday's video because we got the new How to Not Be a Coding God by Dolan himself coming out. So look forward to that, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.